I'm really delighted that this book has been published, but I'm even more delighted that Dr. Gabani got a job after my lecture. <laughs> 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 I see another graduate in the back row, sculpting in the back row there uh, from, I think, 42 years ago. Um, he also got a job. One of the few. I, uh, I, uh, I, I like this museum. Um, it was an old German um, farmhouse. And whenever I'm here, I always think of uh, another German uh, who lived very close to this. It was a forest area around here. And he lived in the middle of the forest in a, in a hut, a dilapidated old hut. And he lived with a snake. He lived with a giant um, python. The two of them were, well, they were like that. And uh, the python went out and did what pythons do during the night. And Genzius, who was the, the German, he would go out during the day and did what German naturalists do during the day. And they lived in symbiosis, the two of them. And uh, we're told that any um, you know, nasty tax inspector or anyone who came was always intimidated when they knocked on the door and this snake came up and looked out the window at them. Um, so uh, the point is that um, when his old friend died, um, Genzius, who was a very practical man, uh, skinned the snake and sold the snake skin for ten pounds, which was an awful lot of money, and sent it to the Natural History Museum in Dublin, in this in the 1850s, um, uh, opened by uh, David Livingstone. And uh, it, it became an object, um, and that's what museums were for. They were there uh, to, uh, to have object art, to, to have things. Um, they, they didn't pretend uh, in any way to... Uh, and yes, they related to a particular section of society, whether that's in South Africa or in, or in Ireland. They didn't pretend to be anything else, but sort of clutter from the past. The radio, the, the, the stump, which uh, 70 years later is a, is a curiosity. Um, you know, Cecil B. de Milne uh, once said, why, why doesn't he give messages in his movies that he makes, this is in the 1930s. And, and he dryly remarked that uh, messages were for the Great Western Railway, not for the, <laughs> the movies. But of course, things have gone 180 degrees now. And the whole point of a museum is that it gives a message. Uh, that uh, a, a, a museum which, 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 which is just the collection, I actually quite like cluttered cabinets and you sit and stare at the objects <laughs> for hours on end. But that, that, that is what happens when you've been a historian since 1973. Mm. Uh, you've got a bit gaga. And um, <laughs> I like so about this wrong. book is <laughs> what I like about this book is the easy flow of it. You know, it, it's not a massive tome. You know, when I first, you know, because, you know, Mary and Ruth, they did go on a bit sometimes. And I thought the book's going to go on a bit sometimes. And we're going to have a 500 pager, maybe even the Lisa Press were the ones that, that, that put a stop to that nonsense. And, and um, I mean, if you cut out the, the, the bits and the pieces at the, at, at the back, it's 160 pages, which is actually the size the book should be, because it's the size of the book that people will read. People are not going to read the 500 pages. The trouble with the, you know, the, the word processing and all that carry on is that instead of the old days when you used to have to type your book, like that, is that is it just makes you go on and on and on and yeah. regurgitate the rubbish. Um, whereas, uh, you know, this is where a book should be. It flows very easily. And the other thing is that it deals with a very controversial subject or subject. And it's very difficult. I mean, what, what Dr. Ungabani says is absolutely right. Uh, you know, we, we've a long way to go. And I was once booed in a, by an Irish audience when I said that I thought that South Africa had actually gone further than Ireland. And I do actually believe that, believe it or not. Um, uh, there is, you know, a, a, a solution 
as it was found in South Africa, it has to be sort of polished up and sorted out and everything. But at least there was a, a, there was there was a solution. Whereas in Ireland, we just drift on, you know, you know, for, you know, decade after decade, when you are got a peace thing or you haven't got a peace thing, yeah. it's, it's still pro problematic. I. Um, I, I, I make I maybe make just two two small anecdotes. So so it's a good book. It's a good read and it's good history. Um, and it, it isn't the sort of thing. And the trouble with Irish history and the trouble with South African history is that it um, very often it will put you on edge. You know, you'll read something and either your own prejudice or else the prejudice of the person who's written the bloody thing, uh, you know, will will just sort of irritate you and annoy you. I must say, I, I haven't been irritated, uh, <laughs> nor have I made my mistake yet. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> uh, uh, my wish, it is my wish this evening that uh, Ruth and Mary not only get added prestige, and prestige, they've also got but lots and lots of Woolies puddings. <laughs> <laughs>